Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rodian and today we're going to be tackling a twisted pier. Now this is going to be the start of a new series on this channel. I'm going to be calling it Bricklaying Skills and in this series I'm going to be tackling difficult builds, builds that I think are impossible, <laughs> maybe. There are a lot of, yeah, advanced brickwork really and today we're going to start off with the twisted pier. Also, in the future, I'm going to be bringing out a, beginning, a beginner's guide to bricklaying. So if you are interested in that or any of the other future videos coming out in this series, please do subscribe down below and click the bell to be notified every time I upload. Right, that being said, let's get into this. Right, so in this video, we are going to be tackling the twisted pier. How to do it, how to set up the template to be able to get it going, a little bit of maths behind it. And if you are interested in any or all of the tools I'm using in this video, then they are linked in the description below. If you'd like to go and check them out, then they're down there. And to all you regulars out there, I didn't get rid of the play button. I just I just couldn't I couldn't bring myself to knock it down. So it is serving as a nice backdrop to this new series. If you're new here and you haven't seen a video about me building that, then there will be a card up there and also a link in the description. Righto, so now that you can see what we're going to build, how are we going to build it? Right, first thing we've got to do is we've got to get rid of this. Now, how are we going to do that? Right, now it's been a while since I've used my magic snappers. Basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go back in time a little bit to before I built this. So the only way we can do that, I think, is... Hold on. They're not working. <sighs> Come on. And there we go, back in time. Where did it go? Power of YouTube. Anyway, right, this section is gonna be all about the preparation of the pier. This part is the part you wanna uh, take a little bit of time over doing because preparation is the key, in my opinion. Spend a good bit of time on this section and the rest of it, the building of it, I find is the easier part of it. So you spend a bit of time on the preparation and the build should be pretty straightforward. Right, so the first thing we need to do on the fresh, nicely swept off, clean footing is build the first course of your pier. Now, depending on how you're gonna have this, I don't if you're gonna have it on the end of a garden wall, have it squared off to the garden wall, or if you're just having a feature of a single pier, then just square it off to, like for me, I'm gonna square it off the, the play button. So I'll have it squared off there. In fact, I'll probably, well, the base is squared off the play button, but anyway. So I'll square it off with the straighter edge that I can see, and then once you've built that one course, then we get onto how you make the template. Now, I've started a little bit already, but I'll go through this. These are gonna be the templates of how you get the, get the twist on the pier, but we'll get to that in a second. So first thing we need to do is build one course of bricks just here. I'm gonna do a brick and a half pier, as you probably saw at the beginning, but yeah, a brick and a half. So just gonna do that now, and then we'll move on to the next step. Right, so once we have the first course built, you check it, make sure it's square. I used the framing square and also with a tape measure, you tape from one corner to the other and that one is, oh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's 495 and you do exactly the same the opposite way. That is, oh, that is 495 as well. And then all of the, oh, a bit bright there, mate. And then all of the sides should equal the same. And that one is 350. And go around here again, 350. Yeah, they're, they're all 350 all the way around. So at this point, you're nice and square and you know you're looking good. Now, I a sort of a little bit of a love hate relationship with my taste. I like reclaimed bricks. Hence why I've used reclaimed bricks here, and also the panel was built out of reclaimed bricks. I'm a sucker for a reclaimed brick. I just love the aesthetic of it, it looks really good. However, on the downside is you get bricks that look like this sometimes. Right old chunks taken out of them, the wobbles down this side. This brick here has got a bow in it, and this brick here bows the opposite way. So they're not the best bricks to use, but I really do like how they look, so I'm gonna use them anyway. 
plus I think if you can lay bad bricks then it makes you even better when you lay a really nice tidy straight brick so right so from this point we go on and we need to make the template so how do we do that well let's find out right so from here we get a piece of wood or cardboard preferably wood because it just makes life easier what you do is you cut out a square that is the same size as your pier so for example that is the same size as that then what you do is you put across from corner to corner and corner to corner and that will give you the center point and then from that center point just drill a hole right through that center now this is essentially you can imagine this being the next course up now what you do is you get a nice long nail uh, not nail sorry a screw if it will focus nice long screw one that gives you plenty on the top above that first course you screw that through that hole once that is dead centered on top of there so essentially what you'd have is you'd be able to turn the bit of wood round with that now uh, screw straight through just touching the concrete so you get free room to spin it around and I'll show you what that looks like before you screw it make sure you got it in the right place just check all the corners make sure they're bang in line I'm happy with that and then you screw it straight down Right, now that's in the dirt. Just hold the nail, the screw, sorry. I keep calling it a nail. And then you're able to spin it around. You don't want it to go too far because you don't want it spinning like a helicopter. Now, from this point, there's two ways of doing this. You need to know the angle that you want or the degree that you want your twist to go up in. Now, there's two ways of doing this. I'll explain them both now. So the two different ways of working out these angles uh, vary on what application you're actually using this pier for. Now you can either use the pier just for a garden wall, a feature or something like that, which is the easier way of doing it. Or the other way is, for example, if you are working between two points, like the floor and the underside of, say, a, a gazebo or a, um, oh, what are they called, a pagoda. Like if you've got a timber pagoda in your garden and you want to put spiral piers around all the timber uprights, then this is the way um, this is a perfect way of doing it. So I will address the one between two points first because that is the most complicated and the other one is a lot simpler. So I'll grab a piece of paper and show you exactly how it works. Imagine you have a pagoda. So I'll do a side view, here's the roof of it and you've got a pier coming down there and like a bit of timber coming down there and you want to turn that into a spiral pier. And we have the base here this might be a bit of a crude drawing, I have to apologise. So, you need to know how many courses you are having between the underside of the pagoda roof and the base. So let's assume that that is 30 courses, give or take, something like that. And now, you want to know how many twists you want to do. Now when I mean twists, let's go back to this piece of wood. If we pay just attention to this side here, now, it all works on 90 degree twists. So, if you want one twist, one 90 degree twist, it turns 190 degrees. So as it comes up, it twists around once. And then if this one goes another one, then that would be 180 degree of a twist going up. Now, the more twists you have, the more uh, in a shorter amount of time, the more severe the twist is gonna be. And that will go around to 270 and then 360. So you want to know how many you want to do. For example, in this one, let's say you have just one single twist. So a one 90 degree twist of the brickwork. So you want to do a 90 degree twist over 30 courses. Okay, so now how do we work that out? Right, so you have your calculator handy. All you have to do so it's 90 degrees divided by 30 courses. And that is essentially it. So if you do, I don't know if you can see my phone here. 90 divided by 30, 
and that will equal three. So that would give you a three degree twist, which is a very, very minor twist. I probably should have said, let's do that for 180 instead. So 180 degrees over 30 courses. That should be double that. So let's go 180 divided by 30 equals, yeah, there we go, six, just double checking. So six degrees, again, that's quite a, quite a mellow, a mellow um, twist, but I like to think between a six and a 12 degrees is what you want to do. Probably, I'd say eight is probably the best, but between six and eight, it, it, it all depends down to personal preference. I don't particularly like an excessive twist. I like a nice, slow, gentle twist. I, I just think it looks better. I hear you say, what does six degrees mean? Where does that come into it? Right, that is all about how many degrees this twist is along here. That will make that six degrees. So how do we work that out? Right, this is why we made this template. Now we need to grab our other templates, which I haven't shown you how to make it. So I'll quickly explain to you how to make these. These are these two L-shaped 90 degree templates here. Now you need two because the bottom one I'll tell you what, let's just pop this out of the way for a second. The bottom one is going to go on the bottom course. Well, it will be on the top of that, but I don't have enough hands to show you. It will be here, and then this one will be on top of it, but it will be on the wonk. That will be your six degrees. So let's just show you exactly how we go about setting this up and making this ready to get going. So from here, we'll pop our template back over the top in the same place, nice and centralised. There we go. Now, six degrees, we take our sliding bevel and our protractor. Now for, the, for argument's sake, the best place to mark off six degrees would be, on, would be on the side of the template. So from here, you take a look down on your template and it's very difficult for me to do it one-handed while holding the camera. So I'll just show you, you just mark off six degrees where the six degrees mark is or whatever degree you decide to go with. Six degrees is there. I didn't mark the upstand first. So, all right, my bad. You mark the upstand first, and then you put that, put that line on the protractor, on the upstand, and then from there, you mark off your six degrees. Now I'll do it this side because I made a mark there. Where's six? Six is a, there. And then from here, you mark the line from the from this upstand line to the line you just marked you draw a line along there so just assume that I've drawn that line and then you set your bevel again oh, it's difficult doing it one-handed you set that bevel to that degree like so so what I'll do is I'll just quickly set this up properly and come back with that bevel but that is how you set the bevel at six degrees so once you tighten that up that'll be six degrees well now before we go any further once you set up your bevel I'll set it up to six degrees. These are the lines I was talking about. Got this little line upstand here and this line along here. Hopefully you can see that. But before we do that, we need to know how to do these templates. Here is one that is fixed and completed. I've just taken apart this one. All it is, is two bits of two by one. And I've cut 45 degree angles on the ends. Focus. So that is cut at 45 degrees. And then all I did is I pilot hold, pilot drill two holes for these screws in that position, just pilot hole straight through there and then screw these together nice and tight. Make sure that, that these are 90 degrees. Best way I've done that is I use a nice roofing square, very simple. Get them in there, it'll show you exactly that they're 90 degrees. Everything needs to be nice and square. So from there you just it's very simple, you just cut those. Now to cut these on 45 degree, I use my chop saw, my Bosch chop saw, but there are also, you can get mitres and small little mitre boxes to use a hand saw with. Now I'll leave links in the description for these, along with all the other tools I've used in this entire video. So go down and check them out if you're interested. So yeah, once you've done built these, you can put a little bit of glue in there just to glue them together if you're gonna use them quite often, but I, it's just so easy to make that I'll just, just do them as I do them. See, I'll pop these screws back in and then we'll get back to show you exactly how to set these two up to get our template and then we can finally get this thing built. 
Okay, I've put that back together and now we are all set. We've got our six degrees. We've got our two templates. Now, just double check down there. Yep, six degrees. Now from here, this is why you make this template to imagine the next line up because trying to set these two out together without this, you can have them all over the place. Holding onto the, the nail, I keep calling it a nail, the screw in the center, just offset that a fraction. Now we're set here, you hold the bevel, either the, the metal end or the timber end, it doesn't particularly make any difference. And you look down at the top, you set one part to the timber that we have on the top. And as you can see, you eye down the other side and you get it so that they touch. Now, it would have been easier if I have used straight bricks because this one is a little bit off, but that is essentially the idea. Now, once you have this template, you go around and you check all the sides, like so. You check every single one to make sure they are all okay, looking good. And now, this is the trouble bit that I am, again, stuck with only one set of hands. I'm not an octopus. Now what you do is you put one template in line with the top of the course that we have built earlier. And with your other hand, because I'm not an octopus, I can't do this. I'll tell you what, let me put you on the tripod. It might make it easier. Take one of your two templates, pop it along. So it runs along the top of the course that we laid earlier. And then with the other one, you align that with the template that we put on top, this timber. You align it like so. Now, just for reference, I like to put a little mark along here so that I know where it's going. But essentially, from here, you pull that out and just pop a screw, pile a hole beforehand, otherwise you're going to split the wood. Pile a hole pilot a hole and drill and fix these two together and then you will have the template that you need to start building your spiral pier. All right, I'm going to pop off pilot hole and drill these together. Once you've screwed that in you have your template. You just pop it on and that will tell you where to put the next course of bricks. Now this is obviously worked out the way that we wanted to do if you had like, for example, like I said, the pagoda and you wanted to build around uh, the post, but obviously you'd have to have probably a two brick pier going around because the post doesn't twist, so it probably won't fit. But anyway, that is how you do it that way, the most difficult way. The easier way of doing it is if we step back to the time before we did any of the maths and you just were on this section, the easier way of doing it is if you're doing a garden wall or a pier, end of a pier of a garden wall or you just want a feature or you just want to practice or something like that then the easy way of doing it is just twist it to whatever you think looks best and that's it don't worry about don't worry about the the degrees or anything you haven't got a start and a finish point like we did with the pagoda and just decide what you like the look of get your sliding bevel take it off one side check all sides make sure all of them are the same and then do exactly the same steps from here to build your template that that's it be very mindful of the fact that your bricks have frogs in these vary a bit because like i said i've got reclaims and they're all completely different bricks but be mindful of this section of the top of the brick before it goes into the frog because if you have too much of a twist you'll come over and you'll and you'll see the frog, which I don't think looks very nice. Plus it is a very excessive twist if you have it that much. So from there, we're ready to get going. The hard bit's done. All you do is you get your template, pop it on. Now what you do is when you lay the bricks, let's move these out of the way. When you lay the bricks, you lay these two here and then you get the template, swap it around to the other side and do exactly the same on that side. Now, when it comes to plumbing, you can't really plumb these unless you have, like I said, if you're working for a pagoda, you would tape off, well, it doesn't really work on a square. You can just try and tape off of the, the timber that goes up, but if you're working between two points, like the low point here and a point that's up here somewhere, and you don't have anything in the middle, then the best way to do that would be to get a plumb bobbin line 
and plumb bob down from the the top like the underside of again if it's a pagoda or, or porch or whatever plumb it down and then you'd fix a screw in the bottom to the timber uh, to the concrete and in the top a screw again and run a line a piece of string down and then you measure off that piece of string as you go and just leave the piece of string in there once once it's built that's really the best place to to do it the best way to do it because on the outside as it's twisting around you just you just can't plumb it there's no plumbing points at all the only other way that i have i have done it once before which was a little bit of a dodgy way of doing it is i had a bit of drain pipe and I concreted it in the bottom and I made sure that it was plumb all the way around, made sure it was plumb, concrete, I actually built three course up so that it had enough in it, a concrete to hold that sturdy and then all you do as you go up with your tape measure you tape off the, the tube out to the outside and you do that on every brick all the way around that is the only way you're going to be able to plumb this up apart from that, this one that I'm going to be doing here, I'm just going to be doing it by eye there's no way I can't plumb it. I'm not going to put anything up the middle. I'm just going to build it up. Generally, as long as you've got a level, every time you build a course around, as long as it's level and the bricks aren't twisting around all over the place, then generally you're looking good. You will be plumb. But it is very difficult. That is the only difficult part of this, I'd say. The actual laying, well, I'm saying that quite a lot of this is difficult. A lot of setting out the, uh, the template and getting all that, all the maths to it is a little bit complicated. But the actual skill of building it itself is not too bad. It's very enjoyable. So what I'll do is I'll set you guys up and we'll start building this twisted pier. See how we go. Okay, before we get going with the build, there's just two things I'd like to say. Number one is before you start going too mad with the build, take your tape measure, measure from corner to corner and you want to mark that off if it focuses mark that off on your template so you know that you're not going to you're not going to spread the pier apart too much and it's going to stay square all the way up so you take that i measured this earlier it was 350 put that 350 on the template if it focus and i've done the same over here there's another mark just here so i know when i put the bricks on to come up to this to this point here and then that will go along with the uh with the twist and the other thing is when you bed the brick on pay careful attention that you do not get any muck down the side here otherwise it will push that brick inwards you want you want to make sure the brick is up against the template <clears throat> all the way around so that it doesn't skew it off in any way so the best way I find is when you put a bit of muck in there wherever that muck goes in you just trowel it off that edge you can always point it in afterwards and when you press when you press the brick down it will go down obviously i know that that will be that brick putting it in that way is going to be in the wrong place because of the brick underneath it this brick will go that way but obviously i'm just showing there that for just to let you know how you can see that you don't want to get any muck on there because even if it is a degree uh, a little bit a mill or two it could push the degrees out and the whole twist could be out so make sure you just trowel it away from the edges of the template and you'll be good to go so from there yeah we'll start going up with the build so this is the fun part now we've shown all that bit let's uh let's get a few bricks laid and see uh see how high we can get this okay, let's go.
And there we go, that's how you build a twisted pier. That's how I build a twisted pier. There are probably a few different ways you can do it, but this is the way that I found uh, works for me. So just a disclaimer, it might not be the best way that works for you, but try it out. You never know, it might fit you just right. What I'll do is, if you guys out there, anyone wants to build one of these, then crack on, go ahead. If you've got Instagram, take a picture of it and tag me in it. My Instagram is down in the description, so go and check that out. I'd love to see all of your, your twisted piers everything like that would be great there are tons of variations of this you can do you can do two brick piers you can also do like oblong ones that are not square there's tons and tons of different ones you can do so just have a play around and tag me up in some photos that'd be great i'd love to see them moving on to uh, the next episode what i'm going to be doing is we're going to be capping this in the next episode in something that i haven't seen done in a long long time i think uh, the last time i saw one of these cappings was at Hampton Court Palace I think it was there it was at a palace of some sort now the topping I want to do in this is something that I think is fantastic and in all honesty I have never built it before in my life so the next one is new for me as well as you so we'll be both be learning as well in this series they're not all going to be me just doing tutorials they're going to be me just having a go at some builds that frankly I think are impossible there's an idea I've got in the head for one that I've never seen anywhere ever so i think i'm going to give it a go and see if we can make it that will be coming up in the coming weeks but next episode will be us capping this off so we can get this nice and finished and looking fantastic even though i think it looks pretty good already as i said before in the video in the description are all of the links to tools that i've used all the tools i've used in this video so if you want to go and check out and see what tools i use then they're down there all they're listed out so go and have a look and if you're new here and you'd be interested in seeing me one guy on my own build an entire house none of these little houses that you see people make out of those tiny little bricks none of that a real full three bedroom house completely by myself then i'll leave the link in the description to the playlist i'll tell you what hold there one second this house here not bad eh anyway I'll leave the link down below so if you want to check that out you're uh, more than welcome all right let's get back to this pier and with that being said i think we're uh, we've pretty much done here so i'll tell you what leave me a comment in the uh, leave me a comment in the description leave me a comment down below let me know what else you want to see in this in this build i'm not going to be tackling the beginner aspects in this series it's just going to be something that's a bit more tricky a bit more difficult so if there's anything that you would like me to have a go at then do go down in the comments section and tap it out and we'll see if we can get that in a video that'd be fantastic but okay leave a like down below if you've enjoyed this video subscribe if you aren't already ring that bell and i will see you guys in the next episode so take care have a good one see you later